Good, I think it's afternoon, folks. Uh, I'm sort of out of time right now, but I'm sure it's at one, just after one. I'm back at my house in uh, Maple Ridge. I just wanted to uh, better get some shades on or just look away from the sun. I'm facing it. Uh, there's the beautiful Fraser River behind me. What little I can see of it. Uh, I can see more of it now that the trees are gone. I can't see the screen now. But that's all right. I just wanted to make some quick comments about some of the people I've talked to. I, I talked to, you know, a young guy who was at the Justice Institute. I talked to firemen in Victoria uh, and some older immigrants and many, many young people who get it that they are excluded from the vote. Uh, so I'm happy that I've mobilized a lot and I've heard from somebody who may be able to refer me to the right constitutional lawyer. And I need to take a break. I'm... I still haven't, as you see, trimmed my beard and uh, made my breakfast even. I still haven't had my coffee. And I don't want to make this all long and rambling. But uh, please, people, I've, I've written in the Fair Vote Maple Ridge group, and I don't have time to share it out. A uh, list of all the associations I thought and the idea for a, a BC voting rights coalition on behalf of the young and all the new people. And, and I will call them the restless. The young and the, the young and the, the restless being my brothers on the street and my sisters on the street and in the shelters and also on support while John Horgan's guys are making $50 an hour and up plus expenses up on Site C and we only got the $100 raise. Do you think they don't hear how they've been shafted by FPTP or realize that they've been shafted by not being able to vote? No, no, they and the young and all the new people who come from countries that, that don't have democracies or non-democracies or things that have problems with it. They all recognize what's going on, so I hope I've mobilized them all. And if you're in one of those communities, please do. Don't go to your community, go to your church, your, your, your ashram, the temple, you know, your mosque, your family, your other student friends, whichever group you're in, the other guys at the shelter you stay at, or under the viaduct where you are, under the wharf out here in Haney. All of you have a right to vote. All you have to be is a citizen. The notion that you had to have already gotten on the voters list in order to be mailed a ballot, which is preferential and prioritized, is to me very highly unconstitutional. And I'm sure my very senior lawyer friend uh, will agree with me and refer me to an appropriate uh, lawyer to, uh, to, to take this case on. I need to not do this anymore, as my friend Dragana has told me, Mike, you need to go back to being a musician and a poet and a historian. You have lots of important work to do, and you're giving yourself away for free once again. So please, people, hear, hear my call. The Street Professor Skookum One needs your help to hear the message about voter suppression, and I will be returning with more formal videos on, with maps and images and, and everything else, and more details of things I've already mentioned, like the 1983 election, the 1975 election, 2001 election, also the NDP elections, including this one, including this ballot, which is why FPTP has to go. And those who say, oh, but what if the Green Party comes to power? Yeah, that's exactly the point. That argument is entirely meant to stop the democratic will of the people of British Columbia who prefer the Green Party, which was born here, and has a right to have a voice. Now, I don't want to be in politics. But I believe that, that Andrew Weaver would be premier if we hadn't had if we'd had PR last year, and that Weaver only did this so that his guys in the party could could get their damn work in Site C going up, and also make a lot of money, like no doubt Tielemann is doing right now from being a lobbyist against PR, which is really lobbying against the Greens. So it's pretty insidious what what I realized now about three weeks ago that the NDP have done with the mail-out ballot. This was voter suppression and it was calculated to be. Now, anybody who knows American politics knows what I'm talking about. So I'm sending this also to Jesse Ventura and Amy Goodman and Cenk Wigger, Stephen Colbert and all and Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders to make them realize Canada is not the nice, honest country they think it, they think it is. And, and that it doesn't matter whether Trudeau plays dice with the cons with with the public, by not by not bringing in PR, so that Sheer might become prime minister, because he knows that his masters in the oil companies and the banks are just as happy with Sheer as with him, and they don't care if Canada doesn't have a fair democracy, and neither does Trudeau, because he's paid not to. 
right? They're all bag men in chief, every single one of the first ministers and the one who wants to be one. So I say bring in proportional representation. Prime Minister, I, I start to call you Pierre Trudeau, but you're not as smart as your old man, okay? But yeah, listen to me. Don't play dice with this country. Times are too dangerous. And don't, don't play dice with my province like you've intended to do and said so, on behalf of China, no less. On behalf of Alberta, who didn't plan their economy properly and now want the rest of the country to bear that burden and say, oh, these are the only industries that matter, like hell they are. Okay, I'm done. I just wanted to thank all the, the BC Ferry staff for helping me and the long ear and wise ear that my friend Peter, who is the chief steward, my friend now, chief who is the chief steward, and I don't know which boat that was. I was in too much of a hurry to notice. Who wheeled me on and off the ferry and helped me out, and, well, you know, and also the cafeteria staff who heard me out, and they, some of them remember Solidarity. So, yeah, lots of other people do. And the young people are really interested in hearing about it, so I should probably focus on my next historical video on that year. Although I will maybe start posting links of all the tips of BC Legislature raised blog to the listing of all the, the different companies that are, now, that are now American companies that have parts of the British Columbia government. We were conquered without even a shot being fired by political donations. All right, that's the size of it. And don't anybody talk to me about stability. Stability is a euphemism for graft and corruption and nepotism and patronage. That's all it is. You know, bankers, what do bankers want? They want to be able to grease the wheels. So do foreign investors, quote, underscore foreign. And our private investors, they're sellouts. They ripped this province off long ago and they want others to do it for now. And they take the skim off of the money laundering that comes into this province by whatever means. You know, I have a friend who was a realtor in A1 warned me, if you don't have 100000 a year from now, you're going to be shut out. The market's going up. We're doing this, he told me. I won't say who he worked for. It's a very prominent firm. Fairly obvious, I think, as to who it is when you think about the prominent firm that marketed BC real estate to China and then complained that it wasn't racist. It complained about Chinese money laundering which is our real estate, Chinese foreign ownership equals money laundering, which it took Ian Young of the South China Morning Post to, to confirm and expose. And I thank him for doing that, and I'll try and vlog him, blog him too, or tag him. I don't know how to use Twitter. You know, so somebody can tweet people and tell me, do I use a hashtag or an at symbol? I don't know, but I'm just trying to get people from the outside world to realize what a criminal empire British Columbia has been for 15, 115 years since the party system came in. I'll eventually get to covering the McBride and McLean governments and the coalition and all that stuff. And, you know, the near, the near revolution we had in the 30s as well as the one in 83. There's so much of a dark and, and secret history behind the Granite Curtain that it's become a bit of my life mission to write about it. Uh, right now I want to win, I want to win this referendum for so that we don't have this province sold down the river again, or should I say sold across the Pacific or south of the 49th, as it has been, and will be even more if FPTP is preserved. And they could call me a radical if they want. I call you out, Bill Thielen, and you're a hypocrite. You're just so anti-green that this Nazi bullshit is hilarious, man, considering that you guys were the ones who tried to jackboot the Green Party on their first nomination meeting. I was there, buddy. Maybe you were too, maybe you were one of the ones that held their hands up and finally admitted they were NDP there to stop the formation of the Green Party. That's a piece of BC history, and I'm an eyewitness, hist eyewitness historian to it. And your friend David Beers hung up on me, okay? So the Taiyi is just as much bullshit as the sun. So people, we take, we take British Columbia back, the new technology, and all the young people, you know how to do this better than me. Okay, so help me out. Take on the charge. You guys are the revolution. The NDP want to stop the revolution and they didn't want to send you ballots. You understand? Why did they want to not send you ballots? They didn't want you to vote on your future because they want to build. Who knows what they want to do in the next 14 months? You got me? And Mr. Horgan, I, chew, I challenge you that that 14 months is bullshit and you've got something up your sleeve to pull in the meantime while you still have unchallenged FPTP power and a Green Party that you wanted to wipe out by staging a, a, a rage referendum through the mail out. I really do challenge that. I really do believe it. 
I believe this was deliberate. So I'm Skookum One, the street professor. Try not to get heated so more people will listen to me. And I'm asking my the people that I've tagged in the outside world, outside the Granite Curtain and beyond the Great Firewall of Canada, to listen to what I'm saying about listening, finding out about what actually went on here and who paid what for who and to what degree all the First Ministers of Canada are and always will be bagmen in chief until we get rid of FPTP. I'm done. I need to, I need to trim my beard and have, make my pancakes. Please, I hope you share this widely. And I don't just mean in British Columbia. All you other Canadians, we need to start a people revolution, okay? We need to do like what they did in Poland and, and the Czech Republic, all over the country, all at once, you know? And make Trudeau, bring in PR, you know? And take control of our country back from the colonists, which both of the big parties, both of the big parties represent, not just represent, the big parties don't just rep represent the colonists, they serve the colonists. And they could be bought by the colonists under FPTP. Do I do name Lockheed Martin? You know, like why are they, why do why are they and not Canada building our jets? Why? Because we didn't support Canada. And why would that be? You, that's another one to look into. Federal FPTP politics and payola and, and bag mannery and all that stuff is even worse than B. No, I can't say it's worse than BC. BC is really bad. BC is really so bad with corruption. It makes Quebec look like amateurs. So I'm Don Skookum, one of the street professors, signing off from his front porch in Haney, Maple Ridge, British Columbia, in the unsurrendered territories of the Kwantlen people of the Stalo. Good day.